Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden on a nice kind of a little frosty winter day but it is already frosty because snow is on its way which is beautiful. I really love and enjoy snow but at the same time I thought okay I want to grab the ball by its horns as long as not everything is frozen over and snowed in and do a little outdoor project with you which is I want to do a little potting and to be fair I just want to focus on one pot which is well just one pot which is the urn standing next to the terrace. You might remember that I've introduced it to the garden last year as a focal point and it is surrounded by well everything that you see right now in my backdrop everything in the garden I mean it's nice winter structures but everything is kind of like brown and beige this is just how a winter garden looks at the moment um, and everything that is in the urn kind of looks pretty similar <laughs> to what you see in my back right now and that is not so nice because it is so exposed and it is really a focal point and I want it to look like nice and pristine and just beautiful so this is what I think is just a perfect momentum to focus on the area a little bit. So how I want to structure today's video is first of all I want to tour you around a little bit and show you the area then I want to tidy up a little bit that I don't want to really cut back too much because winter structures are also a good thing for the garden but some of the things are not looking too nice so I'm going to give you a closer look at that in a moment. Then I want to show you what my game plan is, what I want to put in the urn and then really stage it together with you. So hope you are excited to join me in my garden today again. Maybe let's start with something pretty to look at. So this is the main entrance of the house and these are the pots that I did in one of my previous videos with you. And things are looking so nice still, like the rhododendron is so happy in its container, beautiful. I think next year I'm gonna pot it up into a bigger pot just to make sure that it stays growing and being happy here. But in general, things are thriving. The heather looks fantastic. My winter lights are still on. So couldn't ask for anything more. If we continue walking here onto the upper deck on our terrace. So there you see another arrangement of containers and here I'm just going to take three of them out because those things are just dead as a doornail. There is a panacetum, like a red panacetum, which is not hardy, a mum and then just another tiny mum here. But then I still get the box here, which is looking nice, Eucharist, which I just need to tidy maybe a little bit and the violas that I potted as well with you. They are so cute. Oh, love them. I love this really dark rich purple color especially when the sun is out it's very glorious but let me show you what is not glorious <laughs> I mean it looks a little oof, in here anyways right now but that's it that's the um this is what I see every single day whenever I walk through the garden and this is why it is important to make the most out of it and clearly I haven't done anything out of it let me just walk around with you to give you a closer look at the entire area now and a nice view into the back of the garden. Hard to believe that we are in winter time, isn't it? The lawn looks fantastic. Normally the lawn at this time of the year is oh, yellow, beige, anything but lush and green, let me tell you this. So now we're entering the side of the house. This is still part of the front garden and here it is. This is the urn. So first of all, I'm gonna clean the area below a little bit because there are some bearded iris and bearded iris don't love it when all the old foliage starts to rot on them. So I'm gonna remove that and expose all of the rhizomes because I really want to bask in the sun. There isn't a lot too much sun at the moment but still. Then there's some verbena bonariensis so I'm definitely gonna cut those back and keep here some of the seeds just for myself to sell them next year and then here is a euphorbia where I'm like ah, am I leaving it am I not leaving it this is a little so so because normally you shouldn't cut back too early this is the thing sometimes um, insects might move into these as a winter home so I'm a little on the fence if I do anything here still I'm going to remove probably the amaranth and just put it on top of the compost there's euphorbia the evergreen one I love this one this is offspring by the way that I put here last summer it survived it's happy so before I show you the urn let's just do a quick detour because this euphorbia is one of my winter or all year favorites actually amazing winter structure especially when I cut everything back it's evergreen it looks fantastic and it is a self seeder is that how you say it I hope so so there's a seedling there is a seedling they're just looking fantastic they're more scattered around this entire border but this is the urn and this is what I mainly want to focus on actually today because what is in here is dead. There is a heather and that is not looking cute. There is another heather which still has a little bit of colour in it but it also is like, well, not glorious. I've got some ivy so they are allowed to stay obviously. So the three heather plants, they will go and move onto the compost heap. So the first thing that I will do is just really 
tidy the area a little bit, set up the camera, and then I want to show you those plants and things that I want to put into the urn and then really decorate it together with you. Let me first show you what I've got. So first of all, I have some branches. I've got some really nice red ones this time around because when I walk at the beach, there are some of these really interesting shrubs. I think they are willows, I'm not 100% sure. So if you exactly know what it is, just leave a comment down below this video here. But whatever it is, it has really nice sparkling red, orangey color, so perfect. Then I've got some really lovely twisted lime green branches. And if you see all of my videos, you know where they come from. They are from the willow that I grow in the front of my garden. Then I've got some evergreen cuttings from a laurel. This is a laurel that is flanking the neighbor's property. So I've got two of those. Then I've got hellebores. I mean, oh, beautiful. My all-time favorite winter flower. Look at these white, crisp, perfect so pretty how can you not fall in love with hellebores and they are self seeders here in the garden which makes them even more attractive and then i've got some moss that i just collected at the slope here in my own garden and once i'm going to redecorate the urn the moss is going to go exactly back to where it was because i always do it like this and it works really well for me then i've got some pine cones that i collected in the forest and some pine cuttings as well so i think that this is definitely going to work in terms of color i think this is really interesting versatile really lovely for this season obviously and the urn is limited in space so there's only so much that I can put in this tiny container anyways. The first thing you need to do is kind of like check if your plants in general will fit into the container and they will. The thing with the urn is that the opening itself is pretty big but then it goes narrow very fast. And this is the one thing that I still need to figure about this container in particular. I always need to step a little bit to the back now because I don't have a table here where I can put everything. Well, I think that this is going to be all right for you. So what you do is whenever you take something out of a container, and especially something like hellebores, because they have very flashy thick roots, is press it from all the sides. So see that it comes out nice and gently. Good root system. They are definitely beautiful and they will be very beautiful in here. So one at each side which I think is going to work. They have a lot and a lot of new flowers here. This is so pretty. I just Googled before this video, where do Hellebos Niger actually come from? Because I was like, no idea. And surprisingly, they are alpines. They really come from um, Slovenia, Austria, parts of southern Germany even Croatia. So they grow in mountainous areas. And I think that this is also a reason why they really like it here so much. They can cope fairly well with the cold, obviously, because they come to bloom during winter time. But also here at the south coast of the Baltic Sea, I have pretty sandy soil in general, which means it's well drained. And this is also typical for alpine situation. And in general, what alpine plants love, they love to thrive in well-drained soil. So I really think that this is a reason on why they actually grow pretty good in here. I need to fill a little more soil in here. So I've got my back here. Here comes a potting shovel. Just to make sure that they have soil all the way around. Because when frost is going to come, I don't want that any of the frost is going to damage these roots. Because sometimes with these, if the top growth, like the leaves sometimes might get a little bit of a sunburn occasionally, especially here, because here, I'm going to brush it off afterwards. Um, especially here, uh, this is kind of south facing. So during winter time, I sometimes struggle with evergreens because they sometimes do tend to get a little bit of a sunburn, which basically happens because 
It is clear blue skies, the sun is out, but it's cold temperatures, the ground is frozen. So these plants, when they're evergreen, they don't have the ability to take more moisture from the ground, but still they lose the moisture from the leaves. And this is when they do have a sunburn suddenly. Like two years ago, the laurel at the back of the garden had really severe sunburn and it, it managed, it pulled through, I cut it back and it had a lot of fresh shoots. So eventually it was actually looking good and it was working. But it was quite a struggle and I was not sure if I'm going to have my laurel for much longer. Luckily I did. Next thing I'm going to do is I try to think about if I put some branches in here for height mainly. So let's just grab some of the nice green branches here and also my secateurs because I think that they are too long because if I stick them in like this that'd be very very long so this is not going to happen. So just reduce the height and just really push them in here pretty much in the center somewhere and that's not really a system if you do something like this you know I've just snip them off all at once and tidy the area after this video because otherwise this is going to be 20 minutes of me staging and decorating. That looks cute. It's always nice when they're kind of like gnarly and really twisted and growing into all different directions. I think this is always what makes it quite interesting. And also it works in a sense because halibos, they grow really nice when you grow them underneath a shrub, underneath a tree, because during winter time, when the tree has no leaves, it gets all the sun that it needs. But then during summer time, it is really happy growing in the shadow of the tree. That is good. That is enough of these. Some red ones. Just a little bit of red for some accent. Okay, I'm quickly going to snip them off here. Because I couldn't really prepare it better. That's the thing. I needed to see it once everything is in the container and see how it actually looks when everything comes together. Sometimes there are videos that you can prepare better. This was really like, okay, fingers crossed that this is going to look nice in the end, but I think it is. Guess who's watching me now, Alfie, with a stick lying in front of her, looking at me like, can you just stop with your branches there and play with me now a little bit? It's gonna happen in a moment. Oh, I like the accent of red in here. I think this is really pretty. And I hope that they will keep the color. I'm kind of intrigued if they might even start to root in, depending on how long I keep them in here because Willows, dogwood, all of those, they tend to root in fairly fast. Maybe a little more red if I don't drop my secateurs. I do the red in a second though. Okay, laurel, because I think this is definitely needed for some additional evergreen in the height. Yeah, that is good. And one here at your side. It's funny, planting something in a video is so different to how you would normally plant it because I'm standing in the back and I don't really see what I do in the front. And then in the end, I step around the corner and there's a big reveal. And I'm like, okay, luckily it works. I hope it works from your side already. So some moth, maybe some pine. Let's see if I'm going to use some pine cones as well. This is still to be debated. Because I don't want it to look too Christmas. See, that's the thing. I just want it to look nice and wintry now. Oh, oh. That is pretty. The moss makes it really beautiful instantly. It's very, very nice. If you have moss in your garden and you can just use it for such a purpose, it's always a wonderful thing to do. But don't go to the forest and steal the moss because that's not good. Okay, nice. Pine cones, yeah, they look nice. Come on, why not? It's not really Christmassy, they're just wintry. Let's say that's wintry. Oh my God, what a change, isn't that? Honestly, some of the pine cones, I have lichen on it, green lichen, how pretty is that? Sometimes these small details really catch my attention and this is when I'm like overly excited. So now some of the, this happens now at the back because this is what I see from the terrace. So this is obviously also quite an important area of the entire arrangement here. Cute. Oh my, that is nice. Okay, now I really need to step a little bit out of the frame. I'm sorry, because I really need to see what I'm doing here. Because I can't stick them in totally randomly. And look if it just spills over the corner, maybe. Oh my goodness, this makes me so happy. You have no idea. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. I think what I'm going to do, though, is probably 
incorporate just a couple of more red branches, but I'm going to do it now off camera and then I give you a closer look at everything in a moment. What a difference it makes once there is something nice to look at it in again. Oh, look at Alfie. Shall I play with you first? Shall I play with you first before I show them how nice it looks in the urn? Okay, let's grab it. It's got to be shaky for a second now, probably. Okay, I'll throw it over here for you. There you go. Yay, happy dog. Very nice, happy dog. Okay, but let's focus on this beauty now for a second at least. I'm really pleased with the result. The red makes it look maybe a little festive, but you know what, so it is. It is a nice color accent and I think this is all that I really wanted to have in here. And I also like the structure of it because if I would have only planted the hellebores, hellebores are beautiful, but they don't bring any height. So it would have been maybe a little boring, do I dare to say, even though that they are very pretty here, especially now in combination with the pine cones, with the pine cuttings, some moss is here. So I think in general, it looks really nice. Again, on the other side, there is a little more of the ivy with the leaf variegation. And then what I did still is I quickly added two more branches of the laurel and then more of the red branches because it really creates the height. And I think it works so nice because you have the bottom layer which is interesting because you have the blooms, you have the pine, you've got moss, you've got pine cones, then you have the compact center with the evergreen and then it kind of really gently fades out on the top with these branches and it's very delicate, it's very whimsical and if we're going to have frost and snow I think the frost is going to look very pretty on these branches as it collects there. So can't wait, can't wait to see how it's going to look, if it's going to be pretty. I'm definitely going to upload some photos on Instagram but for now I I am happy that this project is done and that finally when I come back home I'm just walking along in the garden there's something nice to look at again. That's it for today's video. I hope you found it inspirational and maybe I could even encourage you to go out in your own garden or on your balcony and pot up a winter container on your own because what I wanted to show is how easy it is to bring all your interest into your garden and especially by using containers or pot gardens. And even if it's just one, just one single container to what I did here, like on your terrace, on your balcony, next to your main entrance, or as I have it here, on a pole is instantly beautiful and makes you happy. So all I can say now is thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you if you subscribe to my channel or if you give me a thumbs up for this video and also if you leave comments here. If you want to see more of my garden I also do have an Instagram account so the link is always down below the video. So up until then guys thank you so much and I'd love to welcome you next time around in my garden. Take care, bye.